So what if I told you you could quit your job, buy a sailboat and cruise the Caribbean? It may seem like a pipe dream for rich retirees, but believe it or not, by following a few simple steps, anybody could do it. So when I decided to take up this challenge, I was living in New York City, I'd never even stepped foot on a sailboat, and I was paying off debts. Fast forward a few years later, and now here I am in two days, about to set off on the adventure of a lifetime. So in this video, let me tell you how I did it. So step one, learning to sail. So as I said, when I came up with this idea, I was living in New York City, the Caribbean was nearby, but the problem was there were so many islands and the flight connections were terrible. So I figured the best way to explore it was by sea. So why not buy a sailboat? Now at the time I thought that sailboats were really expensive, but a quick Google search revealed that you can get a load of nice older boats that are very, very seaworthy for less than 10K. So immediately when I found this out, I signed up to a weekend course. It was a ASA 101 introduction to basic keelboat. And I took my first sailing lesson out on the Hudson. And that took place over three days. It was 18 hours and it cost me around $500. But the only problem was at the time when my US visa ran out, I didn't quite have enough cash to do the trip. So I had to delay things a bit. So then I moved here to beautiful Malta, a tiny island in the Mediterranean, and I eventually did my skipper's license here. So for anyone who doesn't know, in Europe we have this thing called a day skipper's license. It takes a week in the classroom and then a week practical where you're out on the boat. So each of those weeks costs around 700 euros. You don't technically have to do the theory part of it, but uh, it's very, very useful, obviously, because you learn a lot more about navigation and the rules and all that kind of thing. You're better off doing it, you know? So that's how I learned to sail. But believe it or not, technically, you don't actually need a license to go sailing. It's a common misconception. You can just take a boat and go out sailing. There's no laws against it. The only thing, of course, is if you're going to charter a boat, they will be looking for some sort of qualification. And also, for insurance purposes, it works out cheaper if you have a qualification. So anyway, that's how I learned to sail. And then it was on to step two, which is coming up with a plan. So buying a boat is not like buying a car. It's not like you just go over there, sign the papers, take the keys, put up the sails and head off. No, like registering a boat somewhere and transferring flags is a minefield. Like for example, the boat I bought in the Caribbean, I bought it in Grenada off an American who had the boat flagged in Delaware and I'm an Irish citizen living in Malta who end up getting the boat flagged in Poland. The reason why I didn't get it registered here in Malta is because Malta requires a Maltese surveyor to go over there, look at the boat and sign off on it. Whereas most people in the European Union are now getting their boats registered in Poland because they do not require a survey. So anyway, that whole process, getting it deregistered in Delaware and registered in Poland took me around three months. Aside from that, if you're buying a sailboat, you also got to think about where you're going to keep it. Again, it's not like you can just buy a boat, use the boat for a season and just sell it. Buying the boat is difficult enough, but selling it can take months or even years in some cases. And the costs of keeping it and maintaining it add up. Also, another thing you got to consider is where and when you're sailing. For example, if you want to sail in the Mediterranean, you're better off waiting till summer. Whereas you want to avoid summer in the Caribbean because that's hurricane season. So there's a lot of things to consider. You obviously got to think about your budget. Which brings me to step three, buying the boat. So there's three things you need to consider when buying a boat. First thing is your budget. Two is your size, which is related. And three is seaworthiness. So as I said before, the bigger the boat, the more expensive it is to maintain and keep in a marina. And also the more bigger the boat, the more difficult it is to handle, especially if you're gonna be doing any sort of solo or single-handed sailing. Generally, you wanna keep a boat under 35 feet if you're gonna be doing any sort of solo sailing. Next thing is budget. Older boats cost more than newer boats, obviously, and Catamarans cost a lot more than monohulls. You can spend a million on a boat or as little as 1,000 on a boat. It all depends on your budget. 
So the third thing you need to consider is seaworthiness. So if you think of it like a triangle, there's comfort, seaworthiness, and performance or speed. And generally, if you want to increase one corner of the triangle, the other two get sacrificed. If you're interested in doing longer sails, like ocean crossings, or you're on the sea for a couple of months in open ocean, seaworthiness is obviously very important. So you might have to sacrifice some comfort and performance for that. But if you're just gonna day sail or coastal cruise, go out with your friends, maybe comfort's a bit more important than seaworthiness. So for me, I wanted a really seaworthy boat that was under 32 feet and for a budget of around 10 to 15K. Now you're not gonna get a modern boat that fits the criteria. Like most boats that are under 32 feet nowadays are quite light and are built for performance. But back in the late 60s and early 80s, they made a particular style of boat called a pocket cruiser or a classic plastic, which were these like big heavy boats with long keels at the bottom, making them really, really seaworthy. These things were made to go around the world, but be very compact and easy to maintain. So if you type in good old boats into Google, you're gonna come across around 40 or 50 models that fit the description of a pocket cruiser. So one model I was particularly interested in was an Alpen Vega 27. I mean, these are legendary boats. There's a guy called Mark Rutherford who brought one around the world. And then there was uh, these crazy Norwegian guys who even sailed to Antarctica on one of these and wrote a book called Berserk. It took me a long time to find one in the Mediterranean but eventually I found one in Marseille, France. Originally I wanted to sail it from Marseille to Malta and get some experience here before maybe crossing the Atlantic. But anyone who knows who's seen my previous video where we tried to sail it from Marseille in late October knows that it was a bit of a disaster. There was a fire in the engine room, we had to get rescued, it's a long story. So that boat is currently wintering in Sardinia. And as you can imagine, as that was my very first offshore sail, it didn't exactly fill me with confidence to go sailing across the Atlantic on my own for the first time. So I thought if I wanted to sail the Caribbean, why don't I just keep my boat in Europe and buy another one over there? So I just went onto cruisesforum.com and asked if anyone was selling a cheap pocket cruiser in the Caribbean. And luckily enough, there was a poster who linked to a boat selling in Grenada. A 1969 Nicholson 32 footer named Trade Winds, which best of all came with a free mooring. So here I am, three months later, the boat is finally registered under my name, and in two days, I fly out to Grenada and set sail. If you guys are interested in following my adventures, be sure to subscribe, and if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up, and if you have any questions, just leave a comment below, and I'll try to get to everybody. Anyway, let the adventure begin.